Hey guys, girls, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of the SoCal Watch Reviews Podcast. Sorry we took a little break. Life has been a little hectic, but we are back in full force. We got a, a really cool topic today. We're going to talk about the new Moon Swatch. So you're going to want to stick around. Some of the topics that we're going to cover is uh, the actual release itself. I know Revolution uh, came out with the article. Was it leak? Was it not? Uh, you know, do you think Swatch could have handled the situation a little better as far as distribution? It's just been nuts out there. Also, um, you know, if if people do get this watch, is it going to want them? Uh, is it going is it going to be a gateway into other watches, more specifically the Speedmaster? Um, and do you think uh, this release will devalue um, Omega? And will other brands follow suit? And lastly, we pick our favorites, and also we let you know if we're actually going to get one. But before we do that, with me, Mr. P. Ross, how's it going? Yo, what's good? What's good? It's your boy P. Ross back in the building for another I, one. I missed you, P. I missed you, man. It's been it's been a while, but let's do this. We we got we got two guys with us. So if you don't mind, let's do the intro and let, let's get on with it, man. What you smiling for, Fred? <laughs> He's ready. <laughs> He's He's ready. ready. I always look forward to your intros, man. Yo, yo, he, he knows yo. it's coming. Yo, first of all, <laughs> let's get it to my man over here. Frederico from Chaluso in the building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what up, player? Straight from man, Germany. You, you take a break for a little bit, and like you still don't lose it at all. Full intensity. Oh. I love it, man. Yo, you got to be intense. But this other guy we have here, he's a YouTuber. He's mostly in the watches, cars, travel, and wine, but he's drinking beer right now, which I am very, very jealous of because it is like 11 in the morning here. <laughs> and I can't, it, that's too early for me to start drinking. But Helen. From England, from Wales, we have Simon, aka Escapement 24, in the building. Let's get it. Thank you very much. What an intro. What an intro. And cheers, everyone. Yeah. Welcome, guys. Welcome, guys. So, all right, well, we're, we're going to start off with some uh, wrist checks from our, from our guests. So, Fred, Simon, P. Ross, and I'll finish it off. What are you guys wearing? So I'm wearing the. Oh my bad, Rose. Nah, please, you, you, you could go. You go. You go. Sure. Yeah, I'm positive. I mean, I know you're excited to show where you're going. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Fred. Show uh, us what you got. I, keep, I keep in with the theme. So I'm wearing uh, my Omega Seamaster on a Zelanda rubber strap. So you know, keeping within the theme of the brand, at least. Very nice. Very nice, Simon. Okay, so I was gonna go Omega. But I thought, look, the original Quartz Moonwatch below the Lunar Pilot. I got mm. the same one. Beautiful. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I got the same PVD and everything. So cool. Great cool. watch. P. Ross. Yeah, I deviated from the theme as well with the Hamilton khaki field. Okay. Well, I just I stuck I wore this yesterday, so I just kind of kept it Omega Speedmaster, the automatic version, 3511 reverse panda. So jdm version uh super underrated actually more people are waking up to this because since i started kind of my podcast well the podcast and, and the show more people and more people are getting into this specific model actually i've gotten a few dms from people saying i'm going to pick it up and they do end up picking it up and uh, uh as a matter of fact a friend of the channel omar from time and sneakers and watches just picked up a schumacher uh the yellow version and man i think it's i think it's killer so <laughs> Yeah, Love it. yeah, so today we're going to talk about obviously something that's been huge and um, craziest thing. So I, I put out a video right away, right? I was like super quick. I was I was working and I saw the news. I'm like, oh, crap, this is going to break the Internet. I put out a video and typically my videos don't do thousands of views. Right. But right now my video has over six thousand views in just like two days, three days. And I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> That's just insane. I had to I had to hop on that on the hype train. <laughs> but but yeah, let, let's talk about it. So let's start off with the way that it got released, right? So Revolution put out an article and I saw it, right? I saw it and I was like, oh cool, wow. I send the link to a few friends and then everybody's like, I don't, what are you talking about? It's not there, it's not available. And I'm like, what? So I go, I look, and I'm like, oh yeah. I guess it's not available. And I was looking around Hodinki and a watch to blog and it was just, it was nowhere. And I'm like, that's weird. Well, 
it was too late because a few people had already taken screenshots and they saved the document and I got the document sent to me. Somebody forwarded to me. So I put it in my stories and then eventually everybody started putting it out there. And next thing you know, an hour later, it's everywhere. Hodinkee, the Swatch website. And I'm like, I was just so confused. So I made a comment in my stories, in my Instagram stories saying, I think uh, Revolution may have leaked this. And funny enough, actually, Waco from Revolution follows me. We've you know chatted back and forth a, a while. I've been trying to get him on the show. And he basically sent me a message. He's like, yeah, man, we messed up. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, way, it's all good. You know, as long as nobody gets in trouble, you know, it's all, all love on, on this end. And he just thumbs up my, my comment. So but people have been speculating. They're like, no, it wasn't a mistake. They did it on purpose it's to create hype. So I want to get you guys thoughts. Was it? leak was it not leak was it supposed to come out later what what are you guys thoughts on this i don't know if it was leaked purposely i kind of feel like like with some of the videos i've seen like with people going to certain swatch stores and like just running for the door like creating that massive panic you know people got hurt right yeah, so yeah. You know, I don't I don't think they would leak it like that because this is big. I don't I don't think it was leaked purposely, you know, or maybe it was. Maybe they wanted to create that panic. I wouldn't. I'm just going from the way I feel. I wouldn't want to create that panic, you know, okay. especially for a watch this non-limited edition. OK, so guys, I don't, think it was a, I don't think it was a leak either. I think um, or not deliberately. Um, I think that the news came out. I think if you think about how this was first kind of broken on social media, you know, there were tr little teaser trailers, right. very subtle, very low key. And I actually don't think that Swatch Group and Omega had any idea that this was going to be so big. And I think that they were planning just on, you know, trickling this out. And, you know, it just went crazy. Fred? Yeah, I mean, like they had, I mean, I even shared one of their like little subtle teasers, you know, everything was all circled around the 26th, the 26th, and then I think the leak came, what, 23rd, something like that. So I think that, yeah, I don't think this was something that was premeditated. And also you can kind of see, like from what I've spoken to people like um, in Australia in uh, Southeast Asia as well, like in Singapore and whatnot, you know, you had thousands and thousands of people lining up for yeah. stores that had allocations of like 100 watches maybe. Yeah. Right. So like they definitely weren't prepared for that demand. I think they're they were banking on it being decently big, but I think the leak just created so much hype at the time when they weren't ready. They probably thought, okay, we'll release it on the 26th. You'll have a few people come in on the same day as sort of like the shock value, you know, and then like over the next few days, they'll have some time to sort of get stock up to date and all that. Like to give you an idea in Cologne in Germany, where I live, they didn't even have it in the store. Like they didn't even receive it in stock. But meanwhile, there were um, pictures online of like the Frankfurt and Dusseldorf stores getting swamped yeah by everyone you know going crazy and so i think they just weren't ready because of that leak it just created all the hype three days earlier than they needed it to be yeah well that that's uh so paul from uh wristwatch addiction he's been he, he, again a guy from tennessee here in the u.s he's a good friend of the channel he's been all over it before it was even a thing right he's been talking about it. if you go back like two weeks three weeks or whatever when it started he's like super excited about it because he actually owns the same speedy i do and that's how we met and he just he just loves omega but yeah he basically i guess got some information he's like look this was absolutely a leak and the swatch uh stores whatever they they weren't ready for this just like you said fred the whole thing was it was supposed to be um information was supposed to come out on the 26th maybe the 25th like really late um at night or whatever and create a little bit of hype and be like, hey, surprise, we have these in store, just limited supplies for, for some people. So the way that it came out, you're right. They just they weren't ready, you know, and they had already said it was going to come out on, on you know, the 26th. So they couldn't back out and say, OK, we're, we're not. But what they did do is they changed it from two per household to one per household. Not that it mattered mm. because nobody could get them. Right. But um, so next question is, do you think Swatch could have handled distribution better and i mean it's kind of hard to tell because if it was a leak 
you know, they, that's what they were ready for. They weren't ready for this. It's not like they could go back to their manufacturer and say, hey, we have three days mass produce a million watches for us. So do you think you, they could have uh, handled distribution better? What would you guys do as a brand representative of Swatch? What would you do different? So any of you guys want to jump in? Mm -hmm. Pete, well, let, me, let me take this one. Simon. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think look, 100% they could have done things better. Um, I was in London. I went down to London on. So I, I kind of first heard about this on, I started seeing things on Tuesday, picked up on the leak, I think it was on Wednesday, um, maybe Thursday morning, and immediately booked a train to London. Because, you know, I spoke to, I called a couple of the swatch stores. And one of the stores told me that they were only going to be available in three swatch boutiques in London and one in Edinburgh, in Scotland. Um, now, none of those are near me. I mean, I'm 200 miles away from London. Um, so I booked a train to get down there on Friday night to be at the swatch store early on Saturday. Um, and, you know, got there at before 6 a.m. And there were a thousand people outside wow. the store at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy. And, you know, there were people who had been sleeping there since Thursday outside the store, from what I understand. Um, there was, there were people getting very frustrated. Um, there were people queue jumping. Um, the police were then called and the stores were, they told the stores they had to close. Uh. And, you know, I, I think that it, to me, what that says is the fact that they were only available in three stores in England when there are probably 25 swatch stores says that they obviously didn't have very much stock. Yeah. The stores that did have the watches only had between hundred and 150 pieces from what I understand. Yeah. So they couldn't service a demand for them that was already there anyway. Um, I think that they look that this is why I think they had no idea how popular this watch was going to be. Cause if they knew it was going to be as popular, they would have released it when they had much greater numbers of levels of stock. Or they were trying to keep an element of exclusivity and make it a very kind of small scale launch mm -hmm. in the hope that it would, rather than flooding the market with them, that it would keep a little bit of brand exclusivity for Omega. Maybe. You know, I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't I don't think they thought that it would be as huge. Like you said, I don't necessarily think they thought it was gonna be as huge. You said 150 per store. Like that's ridiculously insane. Um, if they would have, I mean, even with the leak and then somebody just walking into a swatch store and seeing, oh, a mega cross swatch, that's going to cause hype and panic right there. Regardless, you know what I mean? Like this was a huge release. Um, I don't think it was nothing more they could have done besides make more quantities of the watch. And if they weren't ready, just not release it. Mm. until they was ready Fred, you know? and i think like so much of it has to come down to what omega's actual original plan was you know were they planning on like obviously it was planned to be released on the 26th but was the idea to do the final you know announcement late night on the 25th to do it on the 26th itself when the store is open because my guess is what they were banking on is okay they knew this was going to be big but not as big as it was because at the end of the day they had three four days of build-up hype yeah which they yeah. weren't anticipating they were probably expecting, okay, let's say we release it, do the final like release announcement on the 26th itself when our store is open. So, you know, people will catch on, but over the course of the day, you know, they'll sell out by, I don't know, 4 p.m., something like that. Right. And then we have, you know, the next few days to sort of restock. It'll be, it would have been much more gradual. Instead, they had their first three days of excitement, three days before they were actually ready. I mean, Swatch Group is a big, it's a huge company. I'm sure that they're going to be able to supply within the next week or two easily. You know, I think they just right. wanted to have maybe a little bit of a level of exclusivity for those earlier adopters that caught it on the day, went in and bought it, as opposed to having all of this pre-built hype before they were actually ready to release. In terms of what they could have done better, I mean, it's tough because they weren't really ready. And also three days notice is still not a lot to really right. change a distribution chain. You know, it could be that the watches are made, but they still have to get these to you know, uh, to swatch boutiques around the world. Mm -hmm. So the only other thing I can think of is if maybe they shifted gears and made, I don't know, like a pre-order system or something for the first day. Right. So then they could manage the crowds. Like that's the only thing they really could have managed. They couldn't really do, I think, much in terms of the supply side on the day. 
but at least try and manage the crowds, especially seeing, you know, on the 25th and 24th, seeing, okay, now there's a lot of excitement. Like they should have known this was going to be a big problem, 100%. even if they didn't know the scale that it was going to be at. Absolutely. I, and it, it's I just agree. like sneaker hype. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, why say you're going to release a shoe in December and ain't nobody available to get the shoe? Right. You know what I mean? Just, just, this is what I say. Just do a pre-order system months before. You know what I mean? Let everybody buy the watch online who wants to watch and then just ship it out. You know what I mean? Don't, don't have certain amounts in the store and create all this hype and panic for nothing. Because if it's a thousand people, then only 150 get it. That's 850 people pissed. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Look, in their defense, I guess, um, you know, I've never seen a watch launch of anything go this crazy. Right. You know, we, we're not used to this happening in the watch world, are we? You know, when did we last see a new watch launch where there are a thousand people queuing outside the store for it? Yeah. It just doesn't happen in our industry. And I think that, I mean, clearly the hype and the demand was built up by. You know, the, the people I saw who were queuing outside those stores, and this is a huge generalization, I'm going to probably get a lot of hate for this, but the vast majority of them, to me, didn't look like watch people. Yeah. You know, there were a lot of people in those queues that were clearly flippers who oh, were yeah. just trying yeah. to make a quick buck. And, you know, I guess so, you know, look in Omega and Swatch's defense, they probably had no idea that it was going to get this amount of interest and go this crazy. Well, here's here's what I have to say. So they saw how crazy people went online. They should have seen that, right? All the repos, all the hype, all the videos going up. I think they had an idea, probably not to the scale of like thousands of people and people getting stabbed and run over and all that stuff, but they should have seen it coming and they should have seen this. I mean, the, the parallel that I drew in, in, in my video was Timex, the Q Timex. When it came out, people went absolutely crazy for that thing, right? Yeah. Um, they bought it, they and they were reselling for like crazy numbers on on eBay, but then they restocked it, then they restocked it again, and now it's been beaten to death, right? I mean, it's, it's getting to the yeah. point where people go like really another Q Timex, but um to the point is that if they knew the the demand was there because they knew because of, of, of online system, they should have done something on their website. They're huge, right? They have web developers. They got people that they could go, you know what? Let's do a lottery system, right? Have them go to our website, get a lottery ticket. And if they win, they win, right? So that way they knew that people weren't going to be lining up and potentially exposing other people to COVID as well. Cause that's still kind of thing, right? People don't talk about it anymore, but COVID is still, still there. Yeah. And, and there's some other things. Um, and to, I had it two weeks ago, yeah, <laughs> man. So, mm. to your point, Simon, uh, in regards to the flippers, unfortunately, I think that's what it is, you know. But I even think, to the flippers, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was gonna say, I think real people like ourselves <clears throat> know that this watch will be available, right? It's not a limited edition, even though we have FOMO, right? For fear of missing out. Swatch actually announced and it's official. They, they were, I saw it. They replied to somebody and said, these will be available online in the near future. When I have no idea, but they will be available online. Are they going to sell out? Absolutely. But we'll be able to get some at some point, you know, because people are going to get them. And then the flippers are just kind of hopefully going to die down if they're available. You know what I mean? But I think they could have handled the situation a little better because now a lot of people are pissed. A lot of people are flipping these for crazy prices. And if they knew ahead of time that they only had 100 watches going to a certain store, 150 watches, they should have said that. At yeah. least so that way people wouldn't line up, right? Simon wouldn't go on a 200-mile yeah. train ride. Like, that's ridiculous, you know? Like, hey, Simon, this store is only going to have 150 watches. Maybe you would have been like, yeah, what are the yeah. chances, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, you would waste your time. And then yeah. even to yeah, the flippers, think. so the, even to the flippers, you know, I, I would suggest people not hop on that and just wait and be patient. 100%. You know what I mean? And because, whoo, it's going to get ridiculous with this. Yeah. Thing, for sure. Well, let's move on. Do you do you think uh, that uh, this watch is going to want to make uh, people explore other Omega options and furthermore, the actual Speedmaster? Is it going to be that gateway uh drug or watch uh, per se well what do you guys think yeah i absolutely think so 
Like if you want a Speedmaster fan already, this will definitely give you the buzz and the itch for sure. Okay. Guys. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll definitely build a lot of interest for the Speedmaster in general. On the one hand, just because Swatch has a different appeal and also a release like this will reach a much broader segment of buyers who aren't just, you know, watch enthusiasts who aren't already in the know, who already know about the Speedmaster. I think it'll reach a lot of people who would have never heard of it, never thought of it, or never cared, you know, that it went to the moon or anything like that. It would just put this watch <laughs> on their radar or put yeah. watches on their radar in general, which is something this watch historically has served very well as doing, you know, as being that first watch for people that gets them then, like Jean-Claude Beaver in an interview a few years ago now, you know, he talked about how the Swatch got people used to having something on their wrist. So mm-hmm. then, you know, when they get that raise, that promotion, get married, whatever, they think, okay, you know what? I'm used to having something on my wrist. I'll upgrade now. Yeah. I think from that perspective, yes. And then also, unfortunately, it's the nature of the industry now is that the most popular watches, the ones that have the most demand are the ones that have this hype attached to them, yeah. that have the Instagram ability and that have this notion of, oh, you buy it and flip it and you'll make more money out of it. So it'll put some of that association towards Omega and the Speedmaster in a way that it didn't have before. And that's something that I think Omega will obviously value, but us as watch collectors, it kind of sucks because, you know, like that in many ways has kind of ruined brands like Rolex because now it's like, you don't even bother. You know, it's just got that whole element attached to it. It kind of fucks with the experience of wanting it or buying it. And I'm, my concern would be that that trickles to Omega, which again, business-wise is great for them. It means they'll sell better. They won't have to do discounts. But for the watch community or for someone who just wants the watch because they actually enjoy it, want to keep it, not the greatest thing. Mm-hmm. 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 But marketing-wise overall, it'll definitely, I think, build more interest to it. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, look, I, I, I got to agree with Fred on so many points that, you know, is, um, I think, look, this is going to create so many more watch enthusiasts because this is going to be a, not necessarily a gateway watch into speed, um, entry into a Speedmaster, but into watches in general. Because I think, you know, we kind of, while amongst the, you know, the enthusiast community has grown a little bit, you know, maybe yeah. since lockdown and certainly watches are, are doing well, but young people, I think are still kind of a lot of young people still use their phone to tell the time. You know, they don't necessarily see the value in having a watch. And I think straight away, this has put watches back on the map to the wider public. Um, And so I think it is going to create more watch enthusiasts in general. Whether those guys will then go out and buy a Speedy, I don't know. Um, But I think it will turn a lot of people onto watches, full stop. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. the way that I look at it, number one, I, I got to mention something. So I told my friends already, it's so weird. So I, I made two videos, one for my English channel, and one for my Spanish channel. My mom follows my Spanish channel. Why? <laughs> I don't know. And she has a watch collection of herself. She says she has guest watches and fossil <laughs> watches. And I'm like, hey, would you, you have a little bit of money put aside? Why don't you get something nice? She's like, I just don't see the value in spending a thousand dollars in a watch it's just not for me i don't it's just not for her right we've had this conversation before so she watches my video apparently and gives me a call and you know checks up on me she's like miguel do you think you can get me two of those speed masters you're talking about <laughs> i really like the the blue one what, what's it called i'm like um the mission to uranus yeah mom that one <laughs> and then she's like yeah that one that one and then the red one or for which one she like and it's weird it's like i've never really had a conversation with my mom where she's like i really want to watch can you get it for me and i explained yeah, me to too as well my god what's that <laughs> can you get two for me as well i could get three i could get three <laughs> fred do you want any <laughs> oh yeah just have me on the list they're giving just, them away you know, doing that no, order. to the to the point is it's crazy because the Omega Speedmaster, and I can only speak for myself, when I first got into watch collecting, it's kind of one of the first watches I, I heard about, right? But when I saw that design, it just looked so beautiful. I was like, man, that's a good looking watch. I really like that watch. So for somebody to get an actual Speedmaster, right, that looks like a Speedmaster, probably doesn't feel like a Speedmaster, but it is the, the sizing of a Speedmaster, it's crazy because it's such a beautiful design and and it is definitely going to help Omega um, maybe sell more products. I mean, they're huge. Omega is huge in like other countries here in the U S they're, you know, decently sized, but I think other countries it's just like really well respected. Right. 
But here's here's kind of the segue into the other question is, will this devalue the Omega brand? Because I've actually got personal messages from Omega owners crying that they want to sell their Omega now because now it's cheap. Like, oh, now everybody's going to have an Omega Speedmaster. I don't want mine anymore. You know, and it's it's how do you reply to people like that? Right. It's like, okay, well, that's how you feel. But this is a completely different watch. Like just because it has the Omega name on it and it looks like a Speedy, it's not a Speedmaster like the moon watch. You know what I mean? But what do you guys think? Will this devalue Um, Omega? No, it is not an Omega Speedmaster. It's a Omega Cross Swatch, Moon Swatch, Plastic. You know what I mean? Quartz movement. You know, um, Swatch is big anyway. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, I mean, I don't know if y'all have seen how many channels are dedicated to Swatch out there. No. How many Instagram channels. It's, it's like Swatch is big and people are like really into Swatch. So I don't think that it's going to devalue Omega as much as it's going to elevate Swatch. So very true i didn't even think about yeah. it that way this is i think this is going to help swatch for yeah. sure oh okay. yeah what do you think yeah well look i'm just waiting for the um g-shock submariner <laughs> that is never gonna happen rolex is <laughs> way too much on their high horse can you imagine rolex cross swatch it will break the internet literally <laughs> we no. wouldn't have internet access like what the hell Mm-mm. yeah Mm-mm. I don't think it's going to devalue Omega in the least, especially because crossovers like this happen all the time between luxury brands and more accessible brands. And, right. you know, it, it doesn't really change change anything. And I think the big important thing is how long this collection actually lasts. If it's anything like most of Swatch's collections, you know, they rotate in and out of different editions and different collections all the time. So it's not going to be something that sets a lasting precedent of, Oh, why would I get, you know, a $5,000 or $6,000 Speedmaster when I can get a $250 one? That's not, I don't think that's going to be a consistent decision people are going to face because I don't imagine this, this watch is going to be in production for, you know, 10 years or five years or even a year. I'd be surprised. You know, I feel this is something that will come and go. It'll serve its purpose to create publicity both for Swatch and for Omega, but I don't think it's going to be there in the long run to really have people consistently facing that decision. And especially being a hype watch, it means that when they discontinue it, if prices stay where they are, then that's not going to be a decision either. You know, people are going to look at it and say, why am I going to get that when I can get a regular Speedmaster for that money as well, if it gets to that price and stays at it. The other thing is also that, you know what, these crossovers, like uh, I did a video today talking about it, you know, in the automotive world, you have, for example, when Aston Martin did the Signet, now they partly did that because of emissions regulations um, but also at the end of the day, it was them throwing an Aston Martin badge and grill on a Toyota IQ. Does that make people want a DB9 or a DB11 or a Vanquish any less? No. You know, if, if you want a Speedmaster, you want, if you want the moon watch, you want the moon watch. If you want a good watch that looks cool and is made of an interesting material and doesn't cost too much, you'll probably want this moon swatch. If you want, you know, a speedy, but you want to be able to use it every day because you want to baby your moon watch, or if it's a vintage one, maybe you don't want to abuse it very much, you know, then you'll have that appeal either. But I don't think it's going to really damage it because it's like, come on, Omega and the moon watch especially have literally like 70, 60, 70 years of history to, yeah. to pull on. You don't undo that, at least not this way. You know, AP is still AP after they did the Black Panther. And I actually didn't mind that collaboration, but it, but these, these brands are made of much more than just, you know, one bad decision will turn it all around like that, especially like a collaboration like that. Right. I mean, I could see people being upset if it was like a MVMT slash Omega watch. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? I I could see that kind of like, okay, they messing up, but with Swatch being who they are, you know, this thing is going to come and go and like watches like the original jellyfish is going to always reign supreme anyway. You know so what I mean, you mean to tell me that Invicta is not collaborating with Omega? If Invicta, really? if Invicta collaborates with Omega, that will be another disaster. <laughs> you know what? Sh- shout out to all my Invicta fanboys out there. You know what I'm saying? Don't pay me no attention. I'm just talking shit. You know, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be a disaster. All two of them. 
<laughs> yeah, look, I, I made a I made a video about this a couple of days ago about this launch, and I addressed this very question. You know, and look, this is a fun watch. It's just designed to inject a little bit of fun, a bit of humor into the industry. It's almost like a mega kind of having a bit of a joke on themselves. You know, it's not designed to be taken too seriously. Um, you know, guys who are into watches will buy one of these just to wear as a bit of a novelty, but it's not going to replace their Speedmaster. Nobody would buy one of these as an alternative to a Speedmaster moon watch. It's just a different product. And yeah, it's just, it's a, I really applaud Omega actually for getting involved in this and for just kind of, yeah, just not taking themselves too seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and then you know what? This may be what the watch community needed or the watch industry needed was this injection of of Swatch and Omega and the hype around it to give more attention to the watch community or the watch industry. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, something I mentioned in, in one of my videos, actually in the Spanish video, was um, this is really cool on Omega because they obviously know the Speedmaster is their icon. Right. So a lot of people lust after that watch and there's people that will never be able to afford it. Right. Even if they save or whatever, they have other priorities. But for them to say, hey, this gives you the look of a Speedmaster. I mean, not the feel, but it looks like a Speedmaster and it's at an affordable, really affordable price. I got a lot of messages from the Hispanic community saying I've lusted after the Speedmaster for many years. It's my grail watch. And now I could get something that resembles it from omega and it makes me really happy and at the end of the day that's what it's all about right it's just omega saying thank you to their fans and saying we know our watches are not for everybody because they're really expensive but we're going to give you something that's affordable and it's going to give you that feel of an omega speedmaster i think it's a winning it's a you know it's a win-win for them um will they do other models though because i've seen some mock-ups of the seamaster that would be pretty interesting i don't personally think i think this is just gonna where it's going to end with Omega and Swatch, maybe. Uh, but what do you guys think? Another model, a, a Seamaster? Will we see a Seamaster in plastic? I, I don't see it. No? I think, that, no. Yeah, as, as I think you guys said a moment or two ago, you know, the Speedmaster is their iconic watch. You know, it's the one that drives, you know, they all their marketing is driven by the moon landing story. You know, this is the one that's front and center for the brand. And I don't see them doing any other models. All right. Fred? It wouldn't make sense. I mean, like, they'd really have to be desperate to ride the money train on it, which, I mean, at a $250, $260 uh, price point, I don't think this is going to be a huge cash cow. I think, like, the, I think the value in it is in the marketing and awareness that it brings, not so much yeah. in what they sell per unit. So, like, repeating the same gimmick with the Seamaster... I don't think it makes a lot of sense for them to do, especially because they're going to have to up the water resistance, for example. Like they're going to have to put more money into making it at least somewhat viable as a dive watch, which I don't think then that wouldn't make as much sense for Swatch either. Sure. And yeah, that being said, if they made one, I wouldn't lose any sleep being a Seamaster owner. I wouldn't think, oh no, I have to sell my Seamaster <laughs> because they've made a cheaper version of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that's dumb. Like, what okay, about you, uh, P? No, I don't think so. But yeah. I, what I do think is like, like just think about, like if you're going to get a, a moon swatch, and you're going to the Omega store, and then you walk in, they say they don't have none, but the various other collections that they have that's worth buying. You know what I mean? You know, so it's really just bringing, I feel like, awareness to swatch and Omega. And honestly, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. yeah, but uh, but a uh, uh, another Omega cross watch now. I don't think that would be. Yeah. Okay. Just, just something else to add on this one as well is, I think you got to remember as well that I think Omega clearly competing with Rolex on so many levels, and you know Rolex have got so much power and so much budget that you know they sponsor Formula One and spend millions and millions of dollars on Formula One sponsorship. They don't need to do it, but they do it to stop anyone else doing it. It's the same with the golf. Do they sponsor all the golf tournaments? They don't need to do it. They do it to stop anyone else doing it. 
And I think Omega need to find other ways. And I think this is what they're doing. And this may be part of the thinking with this release is they're looking for alternative marketing methods to try and get more awareness and attention around the Omega brand. True that, true that. I could see that. So I guess the question is, will other brands follow suit? Will other brands be like Omega? Uh, one of the things that I saw uh, MBNF do, right? I love MBNF. If I had the money, I would definitely buy one. But they came out with the Mad One, right? So the Mad One is an affordable kind of way to get yourself into uh, MBNF. Now they came out with the second edition, which is a red. And yes, I submitted. I don't know why, but I went to their website and I clicked on the lottery thing because I'm like, that's a cool looking watch. Like I, w- I would sell something in my collection to try to get into MBNF, even if it's not their higher end stuff. I don't care. I think the guy's a genius and, and, and I love it. But do you guys think other brands will, will do what Omega did in a way, collaborate with somebody else, try to create hype? What do you guys think? Yeah, absolutely. Like who wouldn't, you know what I mean? I mean, it would, it would be foolish. Like just, just let's, let's just phantom the fact that if Rolex did a swatch, like just how big that would be. But if they did it the right way, yeah, you know what I mean? We know it ain't happening, but you know, yeah, other brands are going to do this for sure. Especially after seeing the hype that just happened this weekend. Mm. Man, I can see Hamilton hopping on that. Yeah. Well, I guess the, the question really isn't, are brands going to collaborate? Because, I mean, we've seen many collaborations. Are brands going to collaborate to come up with an affordable version of an icon for the masses? I think if, yeah, Rolex, if Rolex collaborated with Swatch, I think um, you'd have to wait two years to get one and you'd have to have bought 15 other Swatches <laughs> first. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I mean, I think without a doubt, we'll see more collaborations like this because also this isn't actually that new. It's newish, it's new-ish within watches, but within the luxury market, it's not like in fashion, for example, right. a few years ago, Versace and Cavalli collaborated with H&M. You know, it was a short run but they did that collaboration that uh, brought more attention to it. Now you have Gucci and Adidas collaborating. Like the idea of bringing luxury to more people, because at the end of the day, more and more luxury brands are becoming more expensive. So their way to sort of build in is doing these collaborations, making sure that they do some marketing so that, you know, someone who's getting their first paycheck, again, it's the same thing as with uh, with getting that original swatch. And then when you get that promotion, you know, then you up to an Omega or a Rolex or whatever. It's the same notion. It's get someone in when they're on the ground floor. So then when they get to the to the penthouse, they're ready to spend with you on your main line. You know, it's yeah. it's not something new. It's something I think that will continue to happen. Not in exactly the same way. Like Omega is uniquely placed because they're owned by Swatch. So it makes yeah. sense to do that collaboration. Um, but I think we'll definitely see things like this. And we need to think that, even Rolex itself, Tudor originally was conceptually much closer to this. The main difference being that obviously the Tudor watches, even the ones like um, pre sort of pre Black Bay, essentially, they would use the same cases as Rolex. The quality was there. The only difference is what was inside. Right. And that didn't dilute the brand in the least. Like it didn't dilute the Rolex brand, even though that you could sort of argue, you know, with a Tudor Samariner at one price point and a Rolex Samariner at one price point, which would have been more expensive. You know, it didn't hurt either one. It just meant they could sell more and they could still reach the masses. And these were things, yeah. you know, the older two of Samariners would even have Rolex branded crowns. Yeah. So the comparison was much closer, but it still worked. It's the idea of being able to reach more and create these gateways for people to then get into your main brand. No, you're right. Well, let me Through put that. you guys on the spot then. If, if there was a collaboration of an icon that could be relatively affordable and you're like, oh, I could get one, what, what would it be for you guys? <laughs> bright linen swatch okay the navy cool. timer so like a navy timer like an affordable navy okay cool oh yeah all right i mean you've got the zen 903 for that that's pretty close no mm-hmm. but i'm talking affordable for like 250 like bucks 260 bucks so bright lean all right fred simon is there another is there another watch that you can actually do this with I yeah mean, i mean joke, jokingly i said the Samarina, but it's never gonna happen yeah right but that'd be but, cool, though. A, a, a yeah, it would be cool. Mariner. It would be cool. But I can't think of another iconic watch, a watch that's got the, maybe the Hoy Monaco. But again, I I couldn't see Hoy doing that. I don't I know. Mean, I, don't I, I, I couldn't see Omega doing this either, but it happened. 
<laughs> true. <laughs> true. <laughs> I would honestly go for like a Royal Oak. If they came out with like oh, a cheaper God. version, quartz version of a Royal Oak for like 500 bucks, I think people would just absolutely lose their minds. But that would be cool, you know, to have like a Royal Oak in the collection or an AP be like, oh, yeah, it's not the, the, the expensive one, but it's an affordable one I could wear. Fred, would the hype, would the hype put it be worth? <laughs> but even well, that, so you, don't, you don't buy the hype. You know? that proportionally like it wouldn't end up being something that like that would be $250. Like if you think the moon watch retails for what five, 6,000 us, and that went down to 250, you yeah. have to scale that up for something, the Royal Oak, like, you know, for them to go all the way down to 250 would just be a bridge very many too far. <laughs> right. You know, like they would scale down to, you know, a collaboration with an Omega, for example, to get to like, to keep with that concept. Otherwise, it'd be really, really selling themselves short. They still have to have some sort of, I guess, quality boundary um, to make it not completely a ripoff. But I think that like this also, this release, I think in many ways, this is kind of like an official homage. Yeah. Like, I think I look at it that way, you know, this is because the case design looks pretty much the same as the Omega. The only difference is, of course, the movement yeah. and the build quality. You know, this won't be the same finishing as, you know, as a steel moon watch or as a right. ceramic dark side of the moon or something like that. So there are also compromises. It's not like, you know, this is too, it's not like Omega is completely undercutting itself by allowing this, by, you know, having Swatch release something that's the same quality and everything. It, right. It's just at $250, you know, so it's tough to imagine that similar collaboration making as much sense and also being yeah. able to sort of have that delineation between the two. I think like Simon said before, this moon swatch isn't an alternative for the normal moon watch. It's just another, it's another beast altogether. Yeah, no, true. All right, guys. Well, so. What I could be happening is I could ima well imagine that, you know, and I know they've done this based around 11 planets in the solar system, but I could imagine maybe next year being some more colorways themed around something else. Maybe. You know, so not not planetary themed, maybe, but you know, something maybe, you know, look, we've got a another, I think I'm right in saying that NASA are, are gearing up for another moon mission, aren't they, in a couple of years' time? You know, so I think 2025, 2026. You know, so maybe they would do another release based around that. I don't know. You know what I'm waiting for, and I would buy like 50 of them, uh, like a, a Snoopy kind of homage because i love the snoopy watch i can never afford yeah. it but if i could get a speedy snoopy even if it's swatch i would get one in heartbeat like i really want one but anyway so let's uh let me ask you so what is your favorite uh color if you have one and will you be getting one not not at the crazy prices but if you could get one or two or the whole collection at retail what you get one so let's, let's go around which one's your favorite and are you gonna get one Yes, I'm going to get one. I think my two favorite colorways are the Mercury and the Uranus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love seeing the hesitation before saying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, Should I, can I say this? Should I? All right, yeah. cool. Uh, guys, Simon Fred. Yeah, so um, I also love the Mercury. I'm kind of a traditionalist with this. I love the fun colors. The fun colors look great. But I think I really like the gray ones. So I think the Mercury or the Moon would yeah. be one of those two. And I think it's going to be the Mercury. So, and I'll definitely be getting one. Nice. Fred? Uh, for me also, the Mercury I like a lot, but also I really like the Mars. So like, yeah. you know, those Mission to Alaska vibes, uh, the, sorry, Alaska Project vibes. Mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. I like the indicators. Also, not the most popular one, but I do kind of like the Jupiter, even with the mm, planet yeah. down there. Um, would I actually end up getting one? I'd probably only get it just to film it and then I'd probably sell it because just the layout of that of that movement, I really don't like how it's sort of the counters are really, really narrow together. Mm. Just that doesn't do it for me. It throws me off. I probably wouldn't get it to keep it. Really? That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, it's, it's surprising, but it's not because Fred, for anybody that doesn't know Fred, he has... He's one of the few people that I know that could hold out and not buy a watch for years. He's really into watches. Man. Watches. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> how, you went how many years without buying a watch? Uh, would have been three. Between three years without buying a watch. Wow. He's, 
he just held out. He just he, he waited, and then you ended up buying your Brightling right recently. Yeah, Confirm yeah, that? yeah. That was... But, yeah, but in the meantime, you bought two Porsche nine elevens, and <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> No, that's funny. Well, obviously for me, I, I, I definitely want to pick up a few. If I could pick up, I know this is going to sound stupid, but if I could have the collection of 11, are they great watches and quality built? No, of course not, but they're fun. First time I saw them, they brought a smile to my face. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. And I, I'm not a huge color person, right? I don't wear a lot of color, but they're fun. And like you said, uh, you know, Fred, the, the white one is really cool because the Mission to Mars, um, uh, it, it, it really... Uh, brings that kind of nod to to the alaska project and those watches are crazy expensive and yeah they're all pretty cool and, and i a lot of people have been joking right like oh it's so funny that the tiffany was such a hype color right with the with the patek and with uh, rolex going up to like forty thousand, fifty thousand for the op and then these guys come out with the same kind of color and call it a mission to uranus so it's just kind of like <laughs> Are they taking shots at somebody? Or not? <laughs> I honestly knows? feel like yeah. that is Omega having some fun. I yeah, think maybe. maybe they banked on that being the popular color and just wanted to like mess with the hype a little bit. Because why would they call it that? I mean, I don't know yeah. much about planets, but is Uranus a Tiffany color planet? <laughs> it is. It is. Sure. It is. It is? It is. Oh, okay. It's then Blue. There you go. But no, seriously, if I could get one, I was I was thinking of the moon watch just because I'm I, I like that color. And and my wife actually likes a Tiffany, so it which is weird again because she doesn't like watches and she actually liked that one. And she's like, Oh yeah, if I could get one, I would get that one. And I'm like, what the hell? But it is a bigger, you know, piece. It is 42 millimeters. Uh they did keep it a little thick, 13.25 millimeters, which I think maybe they could shave a little bit off uh, being a quartz. Uh, Jenny L actually got hands on one. I was watching her review and, you know, it's a fun watch at the end of the day. Uh, you can swap the strap. Cause I didn't know if that was a possibility, but you can swap the strap. I would definitely put like a rubber on it just to be more wearable. Cause that needle looks a little bulky. Uh, but yeah, you put a rubber on it, put a rubber on, on <laughs> yeah. mission to Uranus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, guys let's, t- let's okay. talk about other things so we talked a lot about omega anything happening anything exciting watch related not watch related what, what's up talk to me yo yesterday was air max day oh really besides that that was the biggest thing for me and hold on, hold on hold on let's see yeah buddy got my air max right here what, what wow. do you got what all right so i was gonna post these on instagram but i said no just show them off here. Just show them off here. Yeah. Are you guys sneakerhead? Simon, Fred, do you guys care? Uh, no, I like my yeah. Adi- Adidas originals. That's kind of my thing. Okay. Was that pretty nice? Air Max Plus yeah, Sunrise. Cool. Okay, cool. Ooh. Man. Very love nice. Them. <laughs> love them, love them, love them. Yeah, yesterday was Air Max Day. So to all my Air Max Nike sneakerheads out there, happy late Air Max Day, okay? Very nice, very nice. Other than that, Fred, Obi-Wan, what's up? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I want to see how they integrate um, Hayden Christensen in as Vader. Oh, yeah. I'm curious as to how they're going to make that work. If it's going to be flashbacks, if it's going to be unmasking, and also seeing what is this fight that they have that happened in between the prequels and, uh, and the main gonna trilogy. Be, that's going to be really interesting. You know, uh, whoo. It's about I mean, to go we, know, we know how it's going to end, but still, it's like, right, I want to see right. how does it happen. Um, and I'm curious and hope that they actually show um, Obi-Wan and Darth Maul do some more justice to that ending as well. Oh, yeah, I want to see yeah, a live-action yeah. version of that. Yeah, I can see that, too. I can see Obi-Wan dismantling the Darth Maul. Because yeah. what they did in the Rebels one now that, you know, it was, it like, was like a two hits. Yeah, no. You know, so. Maul would still hold up for a bit longer. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Simon, I yeah, take it you're not a Star Wars guy? No, you know what? I really am. Um, but <laughs> for me, it's the original Star Wars trilogy. You know, I kind of grew up with it. Um, I've got two older brothers, and they were really into it. So when I was growing up, that was kind of all we watched. Um, I've, you know, what I do think is amazing is how they've actually developed this, this series. And, you know, um, it's just incredible. And, and actually... Um, when the last one came out, my wife and I, well, it was just before Christmas, 
and we've got our own business we work together and one day we just it was coming out in the cinema we just went you know what we're just going to skip work today and we're going to go cool. to the cinema. <laughs> and that was really fun so we just went watched the the film had something to eat and I went ah we're not going to work today <laughs> that's the way to do it that's the best part yeah. about owning your business <laughs> yeah the kids were at school for a while so you know <laughs> that's cool that's yeah. cool Nice. All right. Well, any any uh, watch purchases in the in the horizon? Anything you guys got your eyes on aside from the moon from the moon swatch? Brightland every time. You still with that, huh? Yeah. Simon, just so you know, I met uh, P. Ross. How long have we known each other? Over two years. I don't know. I two don't know. Long. Years, almost three. Too years. long. And from the first time I met him, he said, my real watch is a brightly Navitan <laughs> and he has yet to purchase it. So we yeah. are uh, rooting for him. He says he's saving. So I will. This I, is the year. I will this keep cheering for really. Ross. Getting close. This is the year. Getting close. Believe it. What about you guys? See that happen. There needs to be a podcast just dedicated to. Uh, a whole week Navitan. is going to be a brightling week for, for people. A whole it week. It happened. Man, yeah. Fred, I know you just picked up your Brightling. Any any other purchases? Are you going to sell something? Or? Uh, no, not for a while. Uh, <laughs> I still have to figure out what I want next. Um, my my placeholder next watch is a uh, yellow gold uh, reversal dual face. Oh, but I'm sure I can find something else to want before I get that because I'll still have to save for a fair bit of time before I can afford that. Um, but yeah, like I change my mind every ten minutes on what I want the next watch to be. That's okay. why I have to wait so long is like, cause it never stays consistent. And then by the time I made up my mind, hopefully by then I can afford to get what I want. Nice. Okay. Simon. Yeah. You look, I've bought too many watches recently, so um, I should really be having a break from buying watches and, and taking some of Fred's uh, medicine, but um, <laughs> so I bought we all the, do. <laughs> yeah. So I bought the uh, Tudor Black Bay Chrono S and G back in December. Mm. Um, I also around the same time got the, Seamaster No Time to Die. Um, And just a couple of weeks ago, I picked up a Seamaster with a white dial. Mm. Um, So pre-owned. So I should really be, you know, I I shouldn't be buying anything else for a long time. Um, And if my wife watches this, then I haven't bought anything for ages. (laughs) (laughs) So guys, uh, Watches and Wonders is around the corner. I know Rolex has some big, things coming out and tutor and everything who's who are you excited to to uh, see or hear what they have to offer because i'm sure it's not rolex because they're super boring <laughs> they might actually be exciting right. this year no nah, what, what, no i don't think so i don't think so the thing no. is rolex is always the most exciting but at the same time then once they release it's like oh, i could have seen this coming from a mile away and i'm not that impressed yeah but yeah, I agree with Fred Brightly for sure. For sure. Yeah, because it's Navitam or anniversary time. So I want to see yeah. what they do with that. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Simon? Um, well, I did a video uh, a few weeks ago about my predictions for Rolex new releases. And um, without wanting to kind of spoil the video, but I actually think my biggest prediction is that probably we're not going to see a whole lot new from them. There's a few key models that I think we might see some updates to. Um, I think we're going to see some discontinuations. Um, but Tudor, uh, I think, you know, Tudor excites me as a brand because I think that they are the more adventurous side of Rolex. Yep. And, you know, I mean, if I was in a position to be able to add another one to the collection, the one that I really want would be the Black Bay Ceramic. Uh, and I just think that's a really, really cool piece. Um, but I think we might see some more innovative, different pieces from Tudor in the coming year. Yeah. I don't know if you guys caught this, but I I, I don't know why I didn't get an, they di- they didn't get enough flack for this. But Tudor came out. If you go to their Instagram page, they have a new mascot or something, some character car- car- cartoon character that almost mimics like uh, James Bond or something. It was like the most ridiculous thing ever. I even commented, I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, I, I really hope they drop that because they they want to implement that. I guess instead of paying Beckham or something. But for me, it has to be Tudor. I, I don't know why all of a sudden I fell in love with Tudor. I think I do know because a friend of mine was just talking about it all the time, and I ended up picking up uh, two, and it really changed my mindset. I was like, you know what? I wanted Rolex for so long, right? The Samariner is my ultimate girl, but when I got this, it really, I thought at first it scratched the itch, and I was like, all right, it's a placeholder, right? But 
it really has taken his, his own kind of life form into this thing where I really do like Tudor just individually, not, not seeing it as like the poor man's Rolex or whatever people call it. It's just a, an incredible watch on its own right. And it's affordable. You could get them. Uh, I know they're going to come out with the 58 GMT, which I'm super excited to, to see what it is. You know, is it going to be the Pepsi? Is it going to be the Coke? Um, so I'm, I'm super excited. And, and then also to know that their movements are not only cost certified, but meta certified as well. And they have the capability. It's, it's cool that you could get that not with just Omega anymore, but not with Tudor. So I don't know. I'm just excited about that. So cool. But I think, uh, Tudor, I think that Tudor is going to be stepping up and into Rolex's shoes very soon. Yeah. Well, the, the unfortunate thing with that is uh, the price point then. Because yeah. Tudor is an affordable brand, right? Well, relatively speaking. And if they start doing different things, now the price points, the price of entry won't be 2000 or 2500 Now it's going to be 3500 or 4500 So it's, it's good and bad at the same time. You know what I mean? I, I think they should just keep doing their own thing because um, it will never be like Rolex, you know? But uh, mm-hmm. whatever. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> but uh but anyway, guys, where can where can people find you before we sign off, just so they can go support you? Sam. So okay, um, Escapement Twenty Four on YouTube. Um, it's a new channel. I only launched the channel. I think it was in December. So it's very small. It's you know kind of very amateurish compared to the stuff that uh, that you guys are doing. Um, but um, but yeah, so that's me on YouTube, and you can also find me on Instagram at uh, Escapement Twenty Four. Too. Well, let's let's get our man uh, Simon to a thousand subs, guys. Come on, help him uh, out. I know you're here. One K, one K. Yeah, it's, it, it's a lot of work. Obviously, we've been doing YouTube for for a long time, and it's it's uh, it's a lot of work. But just don't think about the numbers. I know it's hard, but just just mm-hmm. focus on just what you like to do. I'm, I'm assuming you started the channel for your because of your passion for watches. And yeah, I'm sure your wife told you to stop talking about watches. So you figure you turn on the camera and just talk to somebody else. I don't know. <laughs> making an assumption because that's what happened to me. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, hey, keep up the good work. I, honestly, like you're I, I, I don't even know how I found you. I, I But anyway, your, your quality is really good, man. So keep it up. Thank yeah. you. Uh, that's really appreciated. And, and it means a lot coming from from someone like you who's, who's a real pro. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks, man. Fred, where can people find you? Where you can find me, uh, Shaluso on YouTube, uh, Shaluso on Instagram as well. Um, and yeah, Simon, really looking forward to seeing some of your content. That's one of the good things about what I like about this podcast is you can always discover new channels and sort of yeah. meet new people within the community. So um, man, let's get you to a thousand as soon as possible. Yeah. One no great. One K. <laughs> yeah no no one of the one of the things that p ross and i always do and always and you know this fred is like we i'm not going to talk bad about any other podcast right but people know you could read between the lines whatever people just focus on who's going to bring the numbers right who can we bring on that's going to create hype and 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 we only care about about those people we don't we don't we don't care do you like watches and are you a down-to-earth person come on right we're not snobs we're not nothing so we this is what the community is all about and it's crazy we have somebody from the uk well from england we have somebody from germany and then guys from the us and we're not even in the same state you know so this is what the watch community is all about you know the just our love for watches and it doesn't care i don't care about the numbers i really don't you know whatever keep you it have. real that's that's the way to do it keep it real yeah absolutely 100 percent. and and that takes you further in life because look the longevity of a podcast or a youtube channel could only be so much but the relationships that you build outside of it are lifelong right like you know i'm relationships I'm going to go ahead and say this is he ain't going to say it. You know what I'm saying? The SoCal Watch Reviews podcast is the best watch podcast out there. If you ain't looking at us, I don't know what the hell you looking at. That's my word. And you're holding a knife. That is kind of, yeah. <laughs> that is kind <laughs> of right. scary, P-Ross. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but P-Ross, where can people find you, man? Uh, Ross Wristwatch Love Everywhere, YouTube, Instagram. Uh, we are 70 subs away from 3,000. Wow. Okay, on YouTube. So, you know, let's get it. Let's get us up there. You know what I'm saying? Let's get my man Simon 1K. Oh, yeah. One freaking K. Stop playing, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all watching garbage content creators out there anyway. You know what I'm saying? Why not watch some good ones? 
Yeah, for anybody watching this video, I'll leave links to every single uh, person's channel in the link. So go support them, please. Great content. Uh, So yeah, I'm I'm SoCal Watch Reviews, obviously, on here on YouTube and Relojando is my Spanish version. We surpassed 2,000 on that channel and we just hit 4,000 on this channel. So that's pretty exciting. You know, it's been three years in the making, but honestly, I just want to create content personally just because I love watches and I love the community, what we build and and just it's just awesome. You know, it's it's not about the numbers, honestly. It's more about the community and that's what we keep preaching. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to oh, come on. Let me say one more thing. One more thing. Say it. Say it. Um, Fred, I was watching your uh your tag Hoya Monaco video. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. And my wife was asleep. And she said, is that the sexy guy? <laughs> and I said, what the? I said, no. What? Why? why? Yes, it is. <laughs> I love how you said that. And that's no. And no, I'm no, like, it's, Yo, not him. it's not him. No, 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 it's not him. No. He said, no, no, no. No, no that's Simon. That, that's <laughs> right, not someone right. else. <laughs> so, yeah, I straight hated on you, bro. I straight hated on you. Hey, yes, Fred. Man. You gave me the view, though, so you know what? Right. That's oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I'm going to give you a couple more, too. So, you know, it's <laughs> AP, we need to start dressing like Fred, though. These are Versace shirts and, you know, <laughs> right. cool color. Right. <laughs> Ponytail. You know, let my hair I grow. Do, I do have a shirt like that I was supposed to give to someone. I could have wore that today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you now, we got to coordinate should've better, should've. man. <laughs> but anyway, guys, well, thank you so much for uh, being on, you guys on the panel and thank you everybody for uh, listening for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video let us know what you think leave some comments uh because yeah this is a an interesting topic uh, for sure let us let us know what you think but uh yeah as always uh thank you so much and stay humble peace